Welcome to 401 Sunset. Where we bring you to you, Windsor. I'm your host, Jake Sayami. And I'm your guest host today, Alex Eden. Today we have a lineup for you like no other. We also have some segments featuring film, film production, and the film facilities here at the U. For all you techies out there. Not only that, but we've spotlighted the women's basketball team in the recent game against Western. Don't forget about the children. The children of the goals program. Yeah, enough about that. Anyways, Christian Kern is going to be taking on us an exclusive tour at Lakeshore Cinema. Hi, I'm Christian Kern. I'm a student at the University of Windsor and a movie theater manager. And we're here today at Lakeshore Cinemas, which is one of the largest independent movie theaters left in the entire country. What I mean by independent theaters is that it isn't owned by a large corporate chain. And the reason there are so few independent movie theaters left in Canada is because up until a year ago, movie theater technology hasn't really changed in the entire last century. Um, the reason it's changed is because in the last couple of years, all of the major film distributing companies in North America announced that by the end of 2013, they'd be changing from sending movies on film reels to sending them in a digital format. So what this forced all of the movie theaters to do was to adapt new digital technologies uh, across their entire theater if they wanted to stay open. So with the new digital projectors, what's interesting is that everything's now based on a schedule. I can hit buttons on the screen and I can control everything. I can turn on the lamp for the projector. I can change which, what movie's playing. Um, I can change the settings on the projector and change the settings that'll be showing on the screen. I can even adjust the lights from the theater just from this little projector screen. Uh, I also have a computer in an office downstairs that allows me to access all of the same controls from a remote location. And even neater than that is I can download an app on my phone that allows me to do all of the same stuff. I can go into the theater, pull out my phone, and I can pause a movie, I can uh, load up a new movie and watch whatever I want. I can even uh, raise and lower the screen in the theater just from an app on my phone. So here on the computer screen, we have our schedule for the entire day. And what we do is earlier in the week, we schedule all of the films that are gonna be playing. And depending on where they're placed, they start automatically throughout the day. It really automates the entire system. Here we have a hard drive. It contains uh, a movie on it, and we just get this shipped in. It saves a lot of time and energy instead of getting massive film reels. It contains uh, the entire film, the audio, everything that comes with it. And all we do is we plug this hard drive into our server, and it automatically gets uploaded into our systems. As far as the licenses for the movies go, we just get them over email now, and we upload them straight to the server. Uh, it's really neat technology. But unfortunately, it's so expensive that very few theaters have been able to afford it. So with the old-fashioned theater technology, we used to have giant platters that would spin, and uh, the film would go round and round on these platters, and it would be fed into the projector. And the projector would then, after, shine a light through each individual square of the film and project it onto the screen. And this is the same technology that was originally invented for theater 100 years ago. I mean, it hasn't changed in years, so all of these theaters have been using the exact same projector technology all of this time. So as a projectionist, what you used to have to do was to cut the film in certain places, and it was called splicing it, and you would have to put together the film by cutting it and taping it together. Then before each movie would start, you would have to feed the film through little pieces of the projector and then back onto the projection platter for it to play. Uh, luckily here at Lakeshore Cinemas, we've managed to keep all of the projectors current. I don't know about you, Alex, but all this talk of uh, movie theaters is making me crave some popcorn. Where'd you get that? You know what would go great with some popcorn? Our next segment, which is an interview with student director Nathan Lachlan about his new movie, I Miss You, I Love You, Goodbye. You know what I think would go good with that popcorn? Probably some butter. Maybe some friendship. But hey, you know what? We'll just go with what you said. Why don't we roll the next segment? My name is Nathan Lachlan. I am a third year CMF student. I've been at the university for four years now. Uh, in my first year, I took drama and education, switched into communications and drama. Now I'm just in CMF in the advanced production program. So you're working on a film. Can you tell us a little bit about what it's about and what it's called? Yes. My film is called uh, I Miss You, I Love You, Goodbye. It's a drama. It's going to be about 10 minutes long. 
Uh, it's inspired by Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, if you've seen that with Jim Carrey, and Blue Valentine. Uh, it is a non-linear story, so the plot structure is kind of all over the place. Uh, it's told through the perspective of my main character, John Belrose, and uh, he relives his experiences and memories uh, with his girlfriend, Allie Fisher. Uh, my girlfriend broke up with me not too long ago, and it, it affected me enough that I wanted to write about it, and I wanted to create about it and express myself. And this is the, the avenue that I kind of took, the creative approach, and it was pretty alleviating for myself. What is your artistic vision for the film? How do you want it to shoot? How do you want it to look? Uh, if you've seen Eternal Sunshine, The Spotless Mind, it's very dreamy, uh, very surreal. That's kind of what I'm going for. Uh, very loose focus, a lot of light leaks, uh, very sensational. Um, I just want it to be beautiful, very beautiful. Are there any specific scenes you envisioned or are envisioning on how you want them to be filmed? Of course. Uh, I've learned from experience. Never do things on the fly. It's good to do things on the fly, uh, especially for like documentary and stuff. But when it comes to, to dramas and to fiction, it's so important to plan things out. Would you ever consider acting in your films? Have I ever acted in my own films? I have, yes. In, uh, I did a short film last year and I had a short cameo but I'm not going to be a Quentin Tarantino and appear in all of my films because I feel like it's cheesy and I'm not that great of an actor. So what made you want to become a filmmaker and what past experiences do you have? Uh, going into my first year of communications, media and film, I actually had zero experience. Uh, one day I decided production was cool and I got a camera and I went out and filmed with some friends and I had a radical awesome time and I knew at that moment that yeah, this is the sweetest thing ever and I definitely want to pursue it as a career maybe, but even then I didn't know that I wanted to do it as a career. Now for sure I know I want to do it as a career. From past experiences, um, what is the most exhilarating part about adapting the screenplay to film? What is the most exciting part about adapting it? Going out and doing it, for sure. The second when you realize, oh wow, we wrote all this stuff down, we planned all this stuff, and now we actually have to do it, and that's the best part, because things go wrong, things get crazy. Uh, working with other people can be very exciting, but very challenging, because everybody has a different uh, outlook, everybody has a different experience, everyone experiences differently and once you start bringing all these different people together sometimes things don't go as planned but that's the best part of it, that's the fun. So are there any final comments you want to make about the film or want to leave us with any further information? My crew is awesome, uh, I would name them all off but there's so many of them. Uh, they're all from uh, Studio 5 Advanced Production and uh, we're hoping, or actually we're planning to film the 21st to 24th of February and then that'll give us two weeks of editing and hopefully the film, the finished film will be done by March 6th and we hope to put in some festivals maybe in the Windsor and Toronto area. Well thank you for your time Nathan, we appreciate you coming out today. Thanks for inviting me out. One more time, come on. Again. Mmm, that was a good segment. Seems like the communication, media, and film program has been training some great new filmmakers. Maybe the move for the film department downtown in the near future will help us grow even more. I'm standing here at the former Greyhound Terminal on University Avenue in downtown Windsor. It's here that film students from the university can expect to attend classes as early as fall 2014. The university acquired this building, as well as the Armories building, in hopes that a move would help to better facilitate learning for its students. The original Art Deco facade of the Greyhound Terminal and a new one-story addition will be updated for the building and it will be extended up the block north to Chatham Street. Together with the Armories building for visual arts students and the bus depot for film students, it will enable creativity between the various programs and with the community. The University of Windsor is hoping to use the new downtown campus for film students for an effort in innovative teaching. The hope is that film students will be able to more effectively create their own work, as well as partnering with other arts departments for better learning and teaching. We spoke to Liam Price about the eventual move. I think the move to a downtown location will be extremely beneficial uh, to communication and media and film students. I mean, it puts us in a different location uh, other than the rest of campus, which kind of goes with the idea of the public sphere, you know? Um, it's a chance for us to kind of get out and about in the community, especially where things are happening. So the Windsor Stars, 300 Alette Avenue. Avenue. Um, it's a chance for us to kind of be in the community where things are happening. So a big side of that would be the media. 
you know, we're going to be around what's happening in the news. Uh, we're going to have a chance to kind of be around all of those companies. This uh, AM800 as well is located on an Alet Ave. So downtown, there's a lot of things going on, and especially for film students too, you know. We kind of get a chance to get out there and see different things other than just on-campus life. Along with that, communication students who necessarily don't come from Windsor will get to see the city a little bit better. They're going to be forced to kind of get out and pass this little, little thing that is the University of Windsor. I mean, a chance for them to kind of see a little bit more of the city is definitely uh, a, a good thing. Along with that, I mean, St. Clair decided that they were going to move downtown, so they moved their marketing, their PR, and their communications all to a downtown location. I think it's a sign of uh, technology and updating the times, you know. We no longer all have to be in one little set location where we can start to kind of build ourselves amongst the community and brand ourselves effectively as the University of Windsor. So one of the things is that the engineers have their own building. Um, biology and chemistry students have their own building. I think this is a way to effectively brand the communication and media and film department as we'll finally get to have a building that's our own. LaBelle has it for the art students, you know. Um, the thing with communication and media and film is there's really three different paths to go down with it. So students that you may have in your first year Media 101 or Intro to Film, you know, you don't get to see them for the next four years because you're going two different paths. This is a way for us to kind of connect with other students that are in our program that, I mean, we may not know. As Liam stated, the new engineering building has enabled engineers to work under one roof and have access to the same resources. The university hopes that the move for art students will copy these results. We spoke with Josie Malchow, a nursing student at St. Clair College, who already faces the trials and tribulations of having to travel downtown for classes. So students who live right on campus or near the campus can just walk to their classes or their exams. When they have classes downtown or exams downtown, they have to figure out a way to get there. And if they don't drive, then they might have to take a bus. And bus fares are so expensive. And even bus passes are really expensive. And they're not going to buy a bus pass if they only have a couple exams downtown. And they already have to pay their tuition. And then to add on, like, bus fares and parking is crazy. And uh, meal plans, too. They have their meal plans that work right on the campus. They don't work downtown, like at the hospital or anywhere else that they want to have lunch. Another concern raised by some is that the influx of university students will not substantially affect economics, as students don't have the disposable income to create an impact. While there is a hope that students will help redefine Windsor, some think it's merely an illusion. Signing off, I'm Alex Eaton. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about you know the downtown campus and everything like that for the film department to be moving there. It's pretty cool. My only concern is double major students who might have to commute from the downtown campus to the main campus. Well, I'll be gone by that time, so that's their problem. Excellent point. Yeah. Anyways, the CMF program is not the only thing that's improving. The women's basketball team getting better and better. They just won the championship for the 2013 and the 2014 season. And hey, if you don't believe me, just check it out. They're great, like Captain Crunch. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Christine Lalone and I'm 22 years old. So I play a uh, point guard on the team. My role is kind of to defend and bring up the ball and make sure I don't turn it over. Uh, we had a rough night shooting. Uh, I think we only shot 14% from the field, so that was a little bit of a letdown. But um, we played really good defense and we held them to under 60 points, so that was good. We have practice for about like three hours, and then we do uh, individual training, which is actually shooting or whatnot. Yeah, we have sometimes we have weights in the morning, and then um, we go to school, then we have training. To be the most conditioned team in the CIS, so we can play 40 minutes. We try and focus on um, our defense, so keeping the teams that we play under 60. Um, rebounding, so um, limiting them to 10 boards. Uh, our shooting over 33% from the three-point line. Okay, so did you remember how many points did you get? Yeah, we got 30. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah. Well, you should congratulate Maya for playing on our senior night. <laughs> My name is uh, Chantal Vallée and I'm the head women's basketball coach for the University of Windsor. Um, so, you know, they took us out of our offense. We couldn't make really good shots. We only shot 14% of three. 
we usually shoot way above 30 percent so we were kind of frazzled and the fact that we were not comfortable and not able to become comfortable with the game for a long time uh, I, I was not satisfied about that yeah so uh you know a win is a win i thought western played very hard and they gave us difficulty we're not used to having a game that is close so entering the fourth quarter i think it was 54 54 those are very close game and i thought we were a little a little nervous um uh, i think it's just not as comfortable but obviously Miami Marie really took over really played really well made five three points and, and we found a way to win with double digits and then with the practice time which is two hours a day where now we're going to work on team concepts offense defense strategy uh and, and more uh, you know uh, less technique and much more strategy as a team about how to win go go it's not like we're not mad we're collaborating here's what you do you gotta play right you have an open lane you drive you gotta move Cheyenne? My name is Elisa Mitten, and I am the Sports Information Coordinator and Home Event Manager for the University of Windsor. I've been here for 11 years. So I, when I started, the team was, um, we could say, not as good as they are now. Today's game was uh, quite close, actually, um, but it was nice to see um, a tough competition and a good game. For the website, I'm in charge of updating the website and writing all the stories and posting that online, as well as keeping to date all the rosters and information and all the links that you find there. The girls, um, despite being the number one team in the country, because they are that good, they um, have a great connection with the community, uh, locally and on campus. People love to come watch them. They go out, they do things in the community. They do fundraisers, they do charity work, they read to kids at school. So they've really connected with the local people. Hired, or Coach Valet got hired uh, in 2005-06, and she completely transformed this team around, based mainly with local kids, which is wonderful, because that helps bring the community in as well. Hey Jake, did you know that I was voted basketball MVP in elementary school and I was almost cast in Space Jam? You don't say. What happened? I was too confident in my abilities to fly. Well, at least our next segment shows some young girls who haven't lost their hopes and dreams yet. Check out Windsor's Goals Program. This program is called Girls Organizing and Learning Sport and it's really a tiered approach to females and only females it's an only female uh, uh, program that we have in this area and it is for um, building self-esteem in young women from actually playing the sport to being taught the sport and moving on to leadership roles being instructors and officials goals is about getting young girls active in sports in an all-female environment we're trying to grab girls who are on the verge of giving up on sports or who aren't leading an active life and get them engaged in sports and healthy living. Uh, this program is all about promoting gender, gender equity and girls playing sports and getting them involved. All the girls are so much fun to work with. They're really enthusiastic. It's the highlight of my week coming to work with these girls. My role in the goals program is, my title is program manager, and I coordinate um, from beginning to end. I interview the leaders for each one of the sports, and then we, I, I actually do oversee um, the sport leader as well, as, and the sport leader oversees the instructors and the mentors. My role in the program is a mentor. Uh, I'm working with the sport instructor, and working on leadership skills and coaching skills. My role in this program is uh, as an, inst is, uh, an inst instructor, excuse me, and um, I help the girls learn all the proper techniques about badminton. Well, the program started with um, uh, a grant that we were able to uh, get from the, univer uh, from, the, uh, from the Ontario government to sustain us for a couple of years to buy equipment, to uh, interview and recruit and hire our leaders and uh, rent uh, the spaces that we have in the gyms. So the need for this program um, was so strong that we felt we would run it even if we didn't get any money. So uh, we started with that grant money and we are moving over a two year program to see if we can involve at least 90 girls per session. That's our goal. This program runs from October through to the end of May. We have volleyball, basketball, badminton, soccer, and uh, baseball. But we're going to be adding more lifestyle fitness type fitness programs where we're looking at Zumba, yoga. It's beneficial that it's an all-girls program because the girls don't have that competitive um, 
competitive environment. They're not competing against boys. It's more about fun and building friendships and engaging with the sport. Other girls who have the same interests and potentially make friends from outside schools and it's, I think it's just a great thing for all of them. When we get boys and girls together, sometimes, not always, um, those fringe girls who just don't have enough confidence to continue to play at a certain level, um, we have them fading into the background and not getting a lot out of the sport that they're, they're supposed to be um, yeah. learning. Mm -hmm. So the all-female environment definitely is a, a venue that we're, uh, we're experimenting with and we're seeing the girls just flourish when there aren't any boys around. If you're interested in the program you can call me. Um, my name is Jan Matt Gasparovich and I can be contacted at 519-566-7901 or at Gaspar, G-A-S-P-A-R at MNSI.net or you can go to our website, www.laws.org, or you can email goalsinfo at um, gmail.com. I wish the Goals program had existed when I was a little girl. Speaking of girls, Jake's over in Studio A right now with our musical guest this week, Christy Palazzolo. I hope you enjoy the performance. I'm going to go join the audience, but before I do, we here at 401 Sunset would like to thank Slices and Squares Pizza for providing our craft services. Signing off. I'm Alex Eden. Today we have a very special musical guest. She's the lead singer of the band One Man Out, and she's also an aspiring songwriter. So let's welcome Christy Palazzolo. Hi. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for having me. Oh, not a problem. So as I've been told, you were very young when you started playing music, and your father was a huge influence on you. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, I started uh, singing and playing piano at a very young age. Um, and I've always had music involved in my life ever since I can remember. I've been singing for so long. Um, and yeah, so now I'm here and I'm aspiring artist now. So awesome. So cool. aside from your father being a huge influence, mm -hmm. I'm sure there's been a lot of other musicians that influenced you. Could you name some for us? Yeah, um, Avril Lavigne is my favorite singer. I love her as an artist. Um, I really like Pink and Kelly Clarkson as well because she has an awesome voice. So aspire to be like them one day, hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that was my dream too, and then I sound like a man, so it didn't oh, work. I, I really yeah. tried, but that it's okay. Sucks. Yeah. Moving on, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you're uh, obviously an aspiring artist, so yeah. why don't you tell us what's been going on with that? Yeah, well, I've been writing for a very long time, but I've just started to uh, start recording my own songs and everything with my dad at his studio, so it's been great. Um, aside from that, though, I, I play with my band One Man Out probably every single weekend. Uh, we play at weddings and the casino uh, quite frequently and private parties and banquets and stuff so yeah keep them busy you know very cool yeah well there's no doubt that i think you're going to be successful i mean very nice lady to speak to then oh, you seem very you. talented <laughs> so i mean i've seen it but let's let the audience see for themselves yeah you're going to play a song for us tonight yeah and your father's here to help you out my with daddy's that. here yes Papa's <laughs> here all right well if you wouldn't mind go ahead yeah awesome thanks be prepared to be blown away ladies and gentlemen we have christy palazzolo I got a hot ride, I'm blowing out of here tonight Feel the winds in my hair as I pass you by Gotta get out, gotta, gotta get out I need to break away free from all the lying fakes Their reflection sounds so bad, it was stupidity Gotta get out, gotta, gotta get out I need space to breathe Perception, and I don't know where I'll 
Thank you so much. Amazing, really. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching again. Um, if you have any ideas for segments or bands, feel free to email us. Also, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. And hey, I'm Jake Sayami signing off. I'm Christy Palazzolo. Thanks for watching 401 Sunset. Where we bring you to you, Windsor. Amazing, guys, really. <laughs> all right.